Uh, good afternoon to one and all once again. This is Brother Darren, Hebrews 9 verse 27, and John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry. And right about now I'm just outside Buckingham Palace, finished work, another day is over, give all praise and glory to the Lord. And um, I'm actually making my way up to Leicester Square tonight to meet some fellow Christians and uh, to, to engage in some evangelism whilst up at Leicester Square. But on the way home from work, I do pass by, or should I say not on the way home from work, but on the way up to Leicester Square, I can pass by Buckingham Palace. And right about now, I'm just outside the palace. And, uh, you know, we can see the wonderful architecture of the statues and all the people that are gathered, uh, gathered just outside the palace after, um, of course, the appointment of the new monarch not too long ago, King Charles. King Charles III and what's remarkable is just simply the amount of people that are always gathered here a lot of foreigners come rain or shine you know the monarchy Great Britain will still appeal to many multitudes the world over and um, so the last time I was down here I was mentioning uh, you know obviously like King Charles now being the monarch of England, I think I mentioned a little bit about him almost being a very ecumenical uh, type of king. I believe that the ceremony um, that was conducted, it was a kind of ecumenical uh, ceremony. Um, you know, you had Catholic bishops there as well. And of course, the monarchy under King Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth I uh, broke away from the Catholic Church and um, they set up what is called the Anglican Church or the Church of England, where it wasn't true theological reform, but the idea was because King Henry VIII couldn't divorce his wife they would set up a new church but I also mentioned the last time that I was down here that you know Prince Charles being involved with the World Economic Forum the push for climate change and uh, the kind of agenda that we kind of see now playing out that some are even called conspiracy theorists for believing that the world essentially will fall into some domain or control one world government one world currency one world religion and I also explain that via things like uh, the United Nations World Economic Forum CBDCs and ecumenism we definitely see a push or a move towards what is to be the fulfilling of Bible prophecy. Got to just move away, got a couple of motorbikes that have just rolled up, they're quite noisy. But, you know, what I wanted to say is, no matter what people might say, uh, critics of the Bible, skeptics of the Bible, polemicists of the Bible. On a day-to-day -day basis, we still find prophecies of the Bible coming true. And, um, you know, I mentioned, obviously, King Charles and the World Economic Forum, and I mentioned last time uh, Klaus Schwab, who is a transhumanist, uh, the head of the World Economic Forum. And he's not the only one, of course, you have Elon Musk. And, you know, whilst the world has been somewhat 
sidetracked by the cost of living crisis and the war in the Ukraine, the fire or the fires in, in uh, Hawaii, Maui, we find out that Elon Musk, uh, as part of Series D, for the funding of the brain computer interface Neuralink, has received another round of funding from none other than Peter Phil. Peter Phil is a co-founder of PayPal. He's also a transhumanist. And um, via an organiz organization of his, or that he's affiliated with, we find that Neuralink has received funding of $280 million. Now the Bible warns, of course, and I've mentioned it many times, that eventually from Revelation chapter 13 verse 6 and read more about it in Revelation chapter 14 eventually a mark will come that you have to take in your head or your right hand without which you will not be able to buy or sell and this is the astonishing thing about the Bible we're on track we're progressing further and further down that timeline and the development of that technology because Musk is not too far away he's got approval from the FDA to get Neuralink these brain computer interfaces tested on humans and recently I watched uh, well I didn't watch it all but I went on to a, a video for a YouTube channel called Neuropod I think it's a fan of Elon Musk's that covers all things in relation to Neuralink. And um, there was a comment that was left on the YouTube page where the guy, the host of Neuropod was dialoguing with someone and, and they agreed that within probably maybe 20 years, they expect implants in your head just to become as regular and as common as mobile phones I would expect also by 2030 that we'd probably see a lot of central bank digital currencies in effect and in Australia in particular there's a heavy push for the cashless society um, banks sometimes not allowing withdrawals ATMs closing and yeah, it's just completely flabbergasting. Prophecy, the Bible prophecy, continues to come through and to be fulfilled. And Matthew chapter 24 in particular, it talks about false prophets and false Christs. So what we have to understand is that the biggest false prophet, of course, in terms of uh, any adherents that follow a particular religion is none other than the Prophet Muhammad who started the religion of Islam where effectively this belief system is ahistorical claims that Christ never died on the cross wasn't crucified and wasn't the son of God or God in human form and that's the biggest false prophet that we have on this earth at this particular moment in time the Bible becoming fulfilled in stunning detail but the Bible also warns about false Christ and definitely a false Christ is the Pope because he claims to be the vicar of Christ he claims to hold the very place of Christ on earth and you can find that in many papal and sickly alls, many papal balls another type of Christ on the earth but not Jesus Christ, the true Christ. And Jesus warned of all these things. And when we look at the devastation that has been wrecked or wreaked through Islam, through the slave trades, through various wars, through terrorism, and very similar happenings or occurrences in Roman Catholicism, persecution of heretics, the Spanish Inquisition, the West African slave trade, which grew into the transatlantic slave trade, 
we have to understand that we live in a world which is anti anti to God and Jesus Christ. And that's the world that we live in, brothers and sisters. So no matter what naysayers may say, skeptics and critics, the counterfeit Christs are out there and they're apparent. And for me, when I see a counterfeit, it's quite easy for me to understand that there's a real and there's a genuine. No matter what people might say in regards to their criticism and what they might believe they can find in archaeology or anthropology. You know, I've got a scientific mind, a scientific mind of inquiry. And I can measure prophecies like Israel um, becoming a nation again in 1948. I can measure the prophecy of the magnitudes of the false prophets and the false Christ. I can see in real time the development of brain computer interfaces and chip implants that might go into hands and heads. And I'm able to make an informed decision myself on the basis of that because I can test that in real time in my timeline. I could die today, I could die tomorrow, but the basis of the information which I've been already been given, I need to make, and I have done make, made an informed decision to turn to Jesus Christ for salvation, to repent and believe the gospel. And that's what I will do. I'll believe the gospel and Bible prophecy over man's lies any other day because the Bible says let God be true and let every man be a liar and you see we have people out here in the crowd in throngs up here we have people literally on the statues exalted as if they were some kind of saints or God in heaven and of course at Buckingham Palace, we have the Palace of the King. Now the Bible says this, the Bible says that all creation groaneth. And the Bible says there will be a new heaven and a new earth. The Bible said blessed are those who have their part in the resurrection. And the Bible says you must have your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. So I'm not just down here to see Charles and what he might offer. If so many people can turn out here for the British King or the King of the United Kingdom, what about those who have died as martyrs? Those who are suffering, from the go suffering for the gospel now? Those who've had their, ha their, ha their houses burnt down? Those who've been whipped and brutalized and tormented? for the sake of the gospel. What about those individuals? And what about the fact that the whole earth is grown of for the return of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. So I do wish our current monarch, King Charles III, all of the best, but the Bible says that, na that, that the name of the Lord is to be praised. And the Bible also says there's no other name by which a man might be saved. That's in the book of Acts chapter 4. So call upon the Lord while he is near. If you don't know the Lord as your personal saviour, be prepared to accept him as saviour, read your Bible, find a good church with sound doctrine, a non-ecumenical church, grow in your faith as a Christian, fellowship with other Christians and repent. And why should you repent? What is salvation? The Bible basically says in the book of Revelations that un unless your name is, is written in the Lamb's book of life, when is this place open? <laughs> as a sinner, you will find your place in the lake of fire, which is an eternal judgment. And I don't want anybody to go there. And certainly if you've heard my words, you've heard my words as a warning.
Anyway, God bless. Signing off for now. This is Brother Darren. Hebrews 9 verse 27. And John 3 verse 16 YouTube ministry.